Welcome back to the Mining Pod. Anthony Powers joining us once again for our monthly miner roundup. I was just down in Miami speaking with all these miners in person. We had a great time. And shout out to all the mining CEOs, operators, and others who are down there in Miami talking about Bitcoin mining. Great conversations down there. Definitely go check out the recordings. You can probably find them on the Bitcoin uh, magazine website or possibly on their Twitter account, YouTube, etc. Anthony, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yeah, been, been fine. Thanks, Will. Yeah, sounds like a uh, success at the weekend. So um, I managed to watch a few of the uh, shows on um, on YouTube catch up. So uh, yeah, some good, great content. Yeah, definitely some good conversations down there. Uh, we will jump right into it. April was a busy month for Bitcoin mining. Of course, we typically go over what happened the previous month uh, based on the monthly reports a lot of our Bitcoin mining public companies give out. We'll also give some fresher updates based on the information we have now. Uh, of course, some of these miners give out updates immediately, uh, right when the first of the month comes. Some wait a little bit, so the podcast is always delayed until everyone submits their uh, report. For us now, we're a little bit later as well because of the uh, conference last week. That being said, we still have other information we can go through, and there is a lot of trend building within Bitcoin mining, uh, so we'll go through those. Let's start off, though, first talking about some of these mining stocks. See here, if you are listening, uh, we are looking at a Seeking Alpha dashboard we built. Just look at like most of the public mining companies out there, their tickers um, in no particular order. I think this one's actually just weighted by their change, the percent change in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, like from day to day, it actually changes quite a bit. And there's not like a lot of sense, I would say at this point in why a mining stock is going up on a day to day change besides maybe a headline. Uh, but you can see over a period of time that there is growth and there is some great performance in, in some of these miners. So uh, let's get into it. Any thoughts on these top miners, Anthony, the percent changes you're looking at or perhaps like their changes over a 52-week period? We, we're, we're still seeing that sort of volat volat volatile swings on a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. But it, generally, look over the last sort of last few months where we've seen the big Bitcoin price um do well. I mean, it's moved up seventy percent from its lows in December. Um, you've seen the mining stocks; pretty much all of them have, have at least increased by hundred percent since since December. Um, but you're looking at a handful of them, and and actually some of those are at the top there. So, so the likes of um, Iris Energy, Clean Spark, Riot, Mara, and Bit Farms. These are the ones that have been putting out good updates, getting the hash rate up, um, and you know are, are Pretty much strategically set going forward now for the rest for the remainder of the year to, to get their hash rate targets in place in, in readiness for next year's halving. Um, so we, we we are seeing a sort of like a, a split between some of the miners and uh, who those who managed to get through the bear cycle um, better than others. Uh, you know where they've reduced you know the debt and uh, where they've been able to buy machines at some really really good prices and get the hash rate up. And, and and we're seeing that come through now. So, you know, April is a good month for a number of miners. I mean, Mar Marathon Digital starting to do what, what we what we thought they did, you know, start doing probably a year ago, actually. But they're starting to build up some really um, good self-mining hash rate, um, 14x a hash in April. And it already appears they've energized far more miners in May because their early signs from their pool are they're going to break easily a thousand bitcoin in the month of may um they achieved 705 in april um which was which was a good month not an exciting month but it was a good month um but but you know they they'd achieved that ne nearly the same amount halfway through may so um and some of that's to do with the with the, the rewards that miners were receiving that first sort of first 10 days of may was was fantastic for miners and we'll we should see that in all their updates in May, we should see all the miners probably get close to their highs in terms of mining um, Bitcoin totals. Um, they should have all made good use of those first 10 days. I spoke to a couple of CEOs and they were sort of like really, really uh, keen to get, you know, as, as many miners switched on uh, during that period because, you know, effectively some days they were achieving twice the amount of, um, effectively twice the amount of Bitcoin the mining of the same hash rate so um it, it's come down a little bit now it's back down to about you know um at seven bitcoin per block in terms of um the bitcoin plus the reward but we were achieving over 11 
for some of those some of those days. Um, so really exciting for the miners. That will help again give some cash flow going through now to, as, as much needed cash flow um, to to get where they to get where they need to do. Um, but yeah, as I say, that you know, looking at the list there, you, you can see the ones that are you know the ones that are starting to move away in terms of size, in terms of market capitalization. And we've seen some of the miners that were probably 18 months, two years ago that we felt there was, you know, um, some really good press at that part in time. We're not, we're not sort of seeing as much of that now. And there's, there's some of them, some of them established miners earlier, two or three years ago, probably not performing as well from a market perspective. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting times. I mean, we, you know, we've we said before that the Bitcoin miners are a, a play on um, a leverage on Bitcoin itself. So when we see the Bitcoin price rise, we do see the miners' volatility even further than Bitcoin. So yeah, it's all it's all fairly positive. Um, you know, we're not seeing any massive dips in, in Bitcoin prices as as people were anticipating. So maybe it is feeling a bottom at the moment. Yeah, definitely uh, some interesting stuff within the mining stock landscape. Uh, the the one thing that's interesting to me, I would say, is over the bull run, we do see mining stocks basically yo-yo based on bitcoin price so much but during like this intermediary bear period and i would say we're almost out of like the worst part of the bear so we're sort of this intermediary period that the rising bull as it's often referred to it's not a bull market yet but like we're slowly adding capital back into the ecosystem people are performing well bitcoin's at a healthy price uh there's some interesting plays with the word nulls that sort of thing we are seeing some of these updates uh, start to reflect into the stock price and vice versa so I'd say something like a Marathon Digital or an Iris, they seem to be doing on a, on a ticker price because they're doing better on uh, their monthly updates. They're energizing more quickly. And I think people who've been sticking around, paying attention, are starting to allocate their shares that way. Now, I haven't looked at the volume data on that. Uh, this is just sort of more of like a trend or a narrative watch as opposed to like actually looking at the allocations or speaking with investors who are giving capital out. But I do think that there's a nice correlation there where Iris is able to more than increase its hash rate by 100% in a month, and therefore its stock goes up. Marathon, similar, right? So I think there's some play here. And the last thing is the ordinals as well. Ordinals is really changing the game for Bitcoin miners. Uh, typically, fees are 1% to 2% of a Bitcoin block. So it's a reward given to Bitcoin miners. 1% to 2% of that is transaction fees. One Bitcoin in an entire block reward or coin-based reward, that's substantial and that's much bigger than it has been in the past and, and we did have those blocks where it was like 10 bitcoin 11 bitcoin 12 bitcoin and that was great but if we even sustain one bitcoin transaction fees per block which contains 6.25 bitcoin then we're already at a very healthy level and i think that will reflect into some of these mining stocks where they're reporting revenues let's jump from here and go right into your updates and for those following along uh audio uh, on audio you can uh, read our update later on Mining Memo. Go to the Compass Mining website. Go to the article page, and you can see the latest April monthly uh, monthly roundup. We'll also take a look at uh, Anthony's latest article on the mid tier miners. Uh, for mid tier miners, just a note: this is not a shot at anybody. This was just based on some criteria, and we'll go over that criteria towards the end of the podcast. But we'll first go towards this one update as I share my screen. So we have this update, Bitcoin mining stock round up April, April monthly numbers. And I'll just let you take it away, uh, talking about some of the narratives from this past month. So in terms of um, production and, and the, the major um, metric I use is the production by Exahash, um, we, we saw again that the, the, the four normal miners who, who take up those slots there were, were, were at the top end of that. But actually, in terms of production for April, TerraWolf actually, in terms, you know, in terms of X, uh, Bitcoin per hex, actually picked High Blockchain to become, you know, the top miner for the month. And um, I had to do some, um, some, some, um, some maths to work out. They do have an element of self mine, self mining, but I'm able to calculate um, because they they articulate what the um, what the, the, the rewards are for so, so uh, sorry for host mining, and so I was able to eliminate the host mining and, and the and the hash rate from that. Um, and had it clarified with the company before I put it into my table. So um, they had a very, very good month in terms of um, in terms of production um, for the operational hash rate that they had um, at 2.85. And we know that operational hash rate, even since April, has, has increased. Now they're over they're over 4x a hash now. So 
um, well on target to their 5.5 um, in the next month or so. So we'll see bigger things from TerraWolf. Um, high blockchain, you know, we've talked about Hive, we've talked about Bit Farms, Iris, and Clean Spot. Very, very, um, you know, solid updates as as normal. And you, you know, between those four, you, you, there's very little to tell. You know, either all four can op- op- occupy any of those top four spaces on a month by month basis. Um, in terms of um, large production, Marathon had had the biggest production in terms of um, Bitcoin, but then they they energized. You know, they've got energy, 14 exas energized with a, with a thir- further three and a half exa hash that was um, awaiting to be energized. So actually installed 17 and a half waiting, you know, three and a half of it waiting to be switched on. So, you know, we've seen those numbers coming through in May from them, from their pool, and it looks really, really positive. Um, Riot at 10 and a half exa hash. Um, we articulated before they've still got this 1.9x hash. Um, their immersion, two immersion facilities are still um, awaiting to be re- reopened. One's due to be completed, the repairs completed in Q2, and the other facility will be Q3. So they'll effectively have six to nine months of no uh, mining in those facilities, um, which is obviously will have a big impact on their revenues for 2023. And that gets them to 12.5 once those are open there. And then also we've seen the updates about Corsicana, the work that's going on there to get, you know, 400 megawatts of power energized down there. Um, we're waiting on the updates about whether they're going to get, when the miners are going to start um, being ordered and, and in place ready for that um, energization. But I'm sure that um, Jason and the team at uh, Riot have got, have got a plan in place um, because the, the facilities come on quite, quite well. Iris Energy, um, <laughs> Iris Energy were able to literally um, double their monthly daily daily um, uh, Bitcoin mined. Um, so they've achieved five point five x ash on the third of May, um, and and had a, had a great month in April, and we'll we'll obviously see a really good month in in May as well. Um, obviously benefiting from, like the miners from the from the uh, early part of May when the block rewards were significantly higher than normal. Um, Clean Spark, um, six point seven extra hash, but we know that their deliveries for a further nine extra hash are coming online, uh, sort of August September. So, in a couple, two or three months' time, they'll more than double their current extra hash. So they'll be joining the likes of Riot and Mara, fine for the sort of like that top that top spot. I mean, I've got them as a mid tier miner, and there was a couple of people said, oh, you know. Why have you got Clean Spark as a mid tier miner? Well, you know, at the, at the time of a Reiner article, their their market capitalization was about three hundred and thirty million dollars, and Mara and Rikes were, were were getting close to two billion. So there's, you know, forget the hash rate. The market capitalization of these companies is so so um, so wide up, you know, in terms of you know how the market value. And we've had again, we've had discussions of do does the market know how to value these miners? Um, you know, you look at Iris Iris Energy um, today, probably have a market cap of about 220, 230 million, and Riot will be close to 2 billion. That's sort of a, a difference of ATEX, and I don't see anywhere near that in the difference in hash rate. So, you know, Iris are operating at literally half of Riot's hash rate at the moment, but they've got a market cap of an eighth of the size. Now, the HODL Riot, they've got, you know, sig- significant amounts of HODL, Worth about three hundred and forty million at the end of April. That's part of it, but you know, I don't know how you get to the. I don't know how they make up the rest of the difference. So again, it's it's interesting times, you know, on how you know the market does value these. Um, but um, uh, yeah, um, and in terms of um, Bit Farms, Bit Farms uh, also achieve five x a hash. Um, so that you know that. A lot of these miners, five five X hash seems to be that number to go for, and they they they've reached it. Um, Hut eight and Hive, who you know eighteen months ago were sort of like you know leading the way in terms of revenue, in terms of growth, um, have sort of like you know faltered a little bit. But we saw a good update from Hive recently. They look like they're going to um, you know purchase more now to get to six X hash by the end of the year, and start to use their GPUs. Um, in the in the 
artificial intelligence um, area where they can maybe get more revenues from from that from that side of things and cloud computing um, in the way that Hutate are starting to deliver on their side. So we're seeing some some potential, but we've still got a way to go. Um, but yeah, um, apart from that, I think um, it was it was it was a, it was a good month considering difficulty was up. We've seen the difficulty go up again a little bit in May, um, but I expect I expect most of these mice to be achieving record results end of May. Yeah, there's a, a few uh, standouts to me over this last month. One marathon uh, increase in Bitcoin production, mostly on the backs of the ordinals, and it, it pays to have your own mining pool. And they they did have they do have their own mining pool, Mara pool, uh, and some other miners do work with other mining pools or have their own, but for the most part, they're using Foundry. Uh, and so you're not necessarily going to get like all the transaction fees from a Bitcoin block if you are the one to mine it. In this case, Marathon was able to do that. So they got a lot more extra uh, Bitcoin mined. And if you're using Foundry, I think it is like full pays per share. So you, like you do get the transaction fees because it's going to be divvied up uh, across all the hash rate. Another one that stood out to me was IRS, as you mentioned, like they were able to successfully get uh, more than 100% of their hash rate online. That comes after... They did default or uh, they had an SPV default, default on some uh, Bitcoin uh, ASIC-backed loans. Interesting that that occurred, but then they were able to swivel around within a few months and put 5.5x hash online. Next one for me would be Cypher Mining, which didn't have much hash rate online last year. And we did a great interview with uh, Tyler, the CEO of Cypher Mining. I definitely suggest everyone go watch that. And they were quiet in 2022 for a reason. They were getting all their production online and they came out of this year just gangbusters and like they're in the, the top four now for uh self-mining in april so hats off to them i think the the last one is again what you just talked about with hive and hut eight mostly figuring up on on hut eight here they did not have great production last month and we talked about it on the mining pod weekly roundup on saturdays they've had some issues with a power dispute at one of their uh locations and they've also had issue with the power itself at another location. So they did not mine a lot of Bitcoin last month because of these two things. That being said, they have some positive things on the horizon. I had a chat, yeah, I had a chat um, uh, last week with with Sue Ennis and um, she, you know, Hooked understand that their, their, their updates the last sort of 12 to 18 months have not been anywhere near the, um, where the shareholders have expected them to be. But they're extremely positive on the merger with uh, USBTC, um, hopefully happening, you know, in this next quarter or so, and um, you know they think they've got a really, you know, it's a really good deal for them. Uh, opens up a lot more doors for them, and so much more potential. Um, once that happens, you know, they they have looked at other um, over the over the past year. They've they've, they've looked at other alternatives, but this one was a really good fit, and um, you know. Sue is really, really bullish on on this, um, and 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 you'd expect them to be bullish. You know, they've they've obviously gone to the market and 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 basically shown everything that's going to happen. But yeah, they they needed that growth. They they struggled. I mean, you know, we go back eighteen months ago, and they were supposed to be getting close to six x hash by the end of twenty twenty one, which never happened, and that was delayed till June twenty two, and and then it's just been delayed, delayed, and it hasn't really occurred. And they did invest in a, a lot of money in these GPUs. At the sort of, at, at, you know, with when Ethereum, when there was a lot of talk about Ethereum mining, the fork and 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 the, so that that side stopping because Ethereum mining was very profitable for for Hutt and Hive whilst they were doing it, but both companies seem to invest so much more, so much money into those GPUs in those last few months. Um, that hindsight now, you could sort of question, you know, the reasons as to why they were doing that because they were. And I'd spoken to Hutt and they were sort of like saying, Yeah, it's gonna happen this year, it's gonna happen this year, the fork with Ethereum when when you know we've been here for two years, it, it's gonna happen, gonna happen. But they really felt it was gonna happen in twenty twenty two. And but yet they still went out and bought more updated GPU cards. Um so yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, was you know, I I did a, a it was it was quite interesting. So about um about eighteen months ago I, I did a poll on Twitter to show who's who's my was you know, who's a, was people's favorite miner and i had some like 2000 votes come back to me and actually on that list there 
It was the Argo blockchain. It was Marathon Digital. It was hot. It was high. Those were the top four. And I think Wright was in the, in the six as well. Terrawolf wasn't including that. I don't think Terrawolf would have actually done any mining that, that far back. Um, there, was a few, there was a few votes for Clean Spark and a few votes for Iris Energy. But I did one literally three weeks ago. And, you know, you can see how the change has now occurred now. And, you know, Clean Spark and Big Farms and Iris Energy were the top three. In terms of, you know, people who follow me on social media, what, what, their, what their views were. And that was that was done before I even put my comparison article out. So it was it was a good indication that if people out there were doing their due diligence as well, they'd also seen that there was three miners performing quite well. But when you look at the votes for Hut and for High, they were they were quite low down. I think it was only three three votes for each and something like that. It was very or three percent votes for each, and it was quite 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 small. Um, considering it was significantly higher eighteen months ago, and that sort of just tells you that how this landscape landscape can change um, quite dramatically. A few thoughts on that, just to riff on it for a second. Uh, the the thing with HUD8 and Hive, to me, especially around their GPU farm, they have come into this in some conversations and publicly in some ways, but the fact that they're spending money in GPUs does sort of tell you their playbook, right? Like, show me where you're putting your money. And I, I do think that they're starting to lead into like this blended model of both mining Bitcoin and providing uh, GPU services, whether that for rendering or AI, stuff like that. And so that does seem to me to break down a little bit and they're, they're, they're sort of shuffling out what they're going to uh, invest in. I think both have been decently forward about that uh, and we'll continue to like show that in the future. I think another thing that we got to talk about coming out of this though is, is the market caps and the ability to garner capital uh, CleanSpark is one that I, I think of. I, I've done a lot of dilution recently to fund their growth, but they've also done so in a way that has added exahash very quickly, right? So you could make an argument that it was a responsible way of uh, of using the cap table. You might not like it, uh, but you may like it next bull run. And I, I think it kind of brings into the conversation some of these legacy miners or some of these, maybe not even legacy miners, but some of these miners who were in the same exahash breakdown chose one model and maybe diversifying revenue like hud eight and hive or maybe uh putting the money all into a texas mine like argo and some focus on other services i, I say like clean spark really focused in on like waiting timing purchases and then double down on it and uh dilute the cap table to get there and i think they're trying to get into that riot marathon status in terms of hash rate online and uh, market cap I think it's working. So I think the capital playbook is the thing to to look at here and be like, who is really savvy with their finances and who took like a, a long-term look at how mining stocks work and how investors look at mining stocks and uh, have, have been successful. I was saying that Hive and Hyde won't be successful. And I think they continue to be successful, but they definitely have a different playbook than say your Clean Sparks or Iris Energies right now. With Hive, what you have to realize is what, what they do on a, what now appears to be a small scale of the miners, they do really well. So they do perform every month with what machines they have. They are producing one of the best margins of all the miners. And their operating costs are probably the lowest of all the miners. You know, so they're not rewarding themselves like some of the miners you've already mentioned that, you know, are getting hash rates up. Those mines are rewarding their, you know, their people extremely well, you know, um, and in, and 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 my um, my my metrics on looking when I did the comparison article highlighted, you know, the 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 GNA costs and the stock compensation costs by company, and it was quite evident, you know, um, who who's 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 potentially rewarded themselves now. Stock compensation stock compensation rewards are generally given on performance achievement bonuses on, on how the company performs but it depends on what parameters you set those you know if you set um targets that are going to be achieved um then those bonuses will be rewarded you know it you know so like i think iris came out with a you know that some of their re, um, bonuses are only paid if the share price hits you know 300 plus dollars and where is at the moment that's sort of like just hovering around the four dollars Maybe not so much of that stock compensation is going to be issued, but you know other miners I've, I've already wrote about before where they've issued stock compensation 
um, if they achieve, say, 10 x a hash or 15 x hash by a certain period of time, and if they don't achieve that, they they get a percentage on what they do achieve. So they still get, you know, a, a quite a good it's quite a good deal. It's not like an all or nothing. It's like if you get 15, you get 100 percent. If you get 12, you might get 8 percent of the of the of the bonus. So you know, um, and you talked about dilution. Um, one thing that the likes of Mara, Riot, and CleanSpark have been very good at is is they've utilised their at the market offerings, and we don't know how many shares they're selling until the quarterly reports come out. So when CleanSpark released their quarterly report, um, you know, a few weeks ago, it was evident that they'd sold you know forty one million shares between December the thirty first and the current date of that report. So you know that and and right amara for the for the you know over the last sort of 15 months they diluted their companies i think right diluted you know it was it was significant amounts i think almost 60 percent what was 40 percent so you know when miners are saying we're managing every month we're not selling bitcoin and we're doing well it's like that they are doing they are selling shares and um, for cash to make sure that they're covering their costs as well as well as their capital costs so um We've seen miners in the past where they've gone to the market with a, a dilution and saying, you know, we're going to dilute, you know, $30 million of shares and the market automatically drop, you know, their, their price drops and takes into account that dilution. Well, it's not happening as much with the ATMs. I haven't seen CleanSpark's share price deviate at all from them, from the news when they reported that they, that they diluted 41 million shares. So their market cap now, when it was $330 million before the report came out, it's now, you know, close to 500 million, their market cap. So it takes into account all those uh, all those shares sold at the current share price. So they've been very fortunate the way they've chosen. And, it's, and, it, and you know, it's, 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 it's all about, you know, you want to make sure you, you're, um, you're, you're realizing the best amounts of money you can get for the share price. So they've probably been drip, drip selling shares on a daily basis, um, you know, to sell 41 million over the space of like just over four months. That's a lot of shares per day. And they needed to sell shares because they've already told us how much it's going to cost to install to to purchase those miners. I mean, 145 million of miners. Well, by selling 41 million shares, you're nearly you're nearly there for that. So I don't know how many more shares they've got to sell to achieve those payments ready for um August and September when the final payments are due for those miners. Um as it's as it's been scheduled in the rate K. Um but yeah, it's, it's it's um it's 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 interesting times. I mean, we we said many times now that the the debt size is going to be a problem for miners. So it's you know it's going to be dilution. It's going to be sell Bitcoin. Is really the two leagues they've got available. Um, some of the mining stocks are you know, I mean, look at the Bit Bit Farm share price it is just over a dollar a share. They you know, and so diluting a uh, dollar a share, you're diluting a significant proportion. Of the shit of, of the actual market cap of the market cap to, to get some re to get some real um you know capital to, to to grow so you know that's that's the challenge yeah no i think you're bringing up some great points there it's almost like there's this gap we're seeing where you have to be willing to use the capital markets in order to get to that 10 x a hash plus grouping or to get that huge market cap and all the other miners have chosen other pathways either debt or slow growth and efficiencies, and they're probably going to stick around that 5x a hash mark. And when the bull market comes, they're certainly be rewarded, I think, for that efficiency. And the efficiency does reward itself. You're able to stay afloat and be comfortable, uh, but you probably won't get as big as some of these other companies. Um, so yeah, we can leave that one there. Let's go to your next article, which definitely turned some heads on Twitter. It was a great piece of writing. Check it out again on our website, compasslining.io. Go to the articles tab and you can see it. This is ranking mid-tier Bitcoin miners by the number. So some of these numbers are identical to the ones that we've seen in the monthly reporting or in the past monthly reporting. And some is from the quarterly reporting. Anthony, before we dive into the article, tell me a little bit about the criteria that you use to come up with this, just so we're crystal clear in that. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, it, it, I'd already done a sort of comparison article between Mar and Raya a couple of months ago. So it was now, because they're, their market capitalizations, as we've already alluded to in this this discussion, you know, you're looking at 1.5 to, to 2 billion for both of those companies at the moment. And um, then you've got a group of 
you know, six or seven miners who who all got a market cap in excess of about two hundred million dollars, and a hash rate operating hash rate of over three x a hash. And so I use that as a criteria um, to 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 do those. And so there was seven seven miners fulfilled that criteria, um, and then basically, you know, I wanted to try and look at as many different metrics. So looking at the liquidity, the profitability, looking at debt, looking at their operation costs, looking at the asset costs, looking at the performance, looking at stock performance. And, you know, rather than just using one metric to say this is ranked number one. Um, and when I do the monthly monthly reports, I look at utilization, I look at production. And actually just two metrics. It's not enough to say, you know, if if, if Hive and and, and uh, Bit Farms are, are everyone's finishing first and second. You know, it, it you need more metrics to, to sort of like get a real understanding. Is of are they consistently do well in every metric? And this was a good, you know, this was a, a you know a, a, put a lot of work into the article to to, to deliver these metrics. Um, which is a, a, you know an indication of where you know at a given point in time. Now bear in mind all the data I used, or the majority of data I used, was up until the end of December twenty two because most a lot of the miners hadn't released their data and as i was finishing the article every day there was like another quarterly coming out for the first quarter but i'd set in stone my you know the methodology i was going to use um and i know that a couple of those miners won't put their quarter their next quarters out until maybe september because for them it will be the end of year quarter so miners don't always follow calendar year some miners are actually operating say from april to april so Sorry, April to March. So the so the January to March is their final year, and you don't tend to put your final year out literally just after the quarter is finished. You you have to get them um, audited, and it's they're called final accounts. So for, if we use Hive blockchain as an example, Hive will release their final accounts in probably August September, and they'll release their their first quarter probably at the same time because they'll be ready to release at the same time. But they they can't release their finals until they they they've been audited so um i used to, to make sure using a fair comparison i used everything up to the thir- 31st of december 22 apart from things like hash rate where we know the hash rate is the hash rate at the moment anything that's been dis- disclosed that i can use for all miners i was able to do that so for an april update i could use their current hash rate if they turned around and said our our strategic hash rate for the end of 2023 is this amount I'm able to use that as well. So um, that was also applied a metric there. So there's a case of going through each of the metrics and then and then using a weighted score. So what things did I think were really important as a, you know, when you're looking at sort of like, you know, 10 different metrics, you know, you might apply a little bit more weight to say the margin. So, you know, your cost is really important for a miner. You want to make sure, you, you know, you've got your cost controlled. Um, so you could argue cost control is more important than say share share price growth or 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 extra hash growth because it's you know your ability to pay, to meet to pay your bills. So the things like you know the liquidity, the operational costs, they are higher weighting than some of the others. Um, and you know I'm sure that you know any number of analysts could have used different data or sit or, or use data and, and do it a different way. But you know this was all for. You know, for entertainment purposes, just to show just show a perspective for people out there who are interested in the mining stocks that you know there's a bit of due diligence done. And I always say to people, you know, go out there and you know, if you like what you see in my content, go and go and delve yourselves. All the reports are there to look at. You know, nothing's hidden with these miners. You can find everything out from them. They have to disclose it. Um, I could sort of work my way around the various um, uh, tools now to get that data quite quickly. Um, but when you look at you know these reporting that you know some of the reports are 200 pages long and you have to go and find the data in those 200 pages so it's you know it's not like a, a two or three page update that like you see at the end of the month it you have to go and find it and um yeah if you're prepared to read them you you do get a really good indication about the company it does actually put a real lot of detail in there for you to to to, to go yeah, so we uh, go through a few things here: balance sheet strength, liquidity. Yeah, I mean balance sheet strength, we said is so so important for for miners. We we saw this in twenty twenty two. You know, um, we saw Core Scientific go into chapter eleven. Argo blockchain were literally on the cliff going into chapter eleven before they got an eleventh hour 
waiver from um, Galaxy Digital buying the Helios site and giving them a, a effectively a 12 month runway to try and manage 2023 in terms of um, being able to meet their costs for the next 12 months. So the strength of the balance sheet is a really important position there. And we've and we've always seen the likes of Hut8 have maintained strong balance sheet position. We've talked about, you know, six months ago, we, were, we could have put Iris Energy in the same bracket as Core Scientific and, and Argo Blockchain. They were in a similar position where they owed a lot of money and didn't have the cash to, to you know, to, to necessarily meet all their debt requirements. And so, you know, Fortunately for them, the SPVs um, gave them a, an avenue where they could actually hand back the miners, which had reduced so much in value that it it made no sense to 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 keep the assets and pay the debt. You know, the assets were worth about sixty five million. The debt was worth over a hundred million. Um, effectively, they were, they were able to wipe forty million of debt off their balance sheet by handing the assets back, and that's what they, that's what they did. And the, the main company had no recourse to any of the issues. And what they did then with the cash that they had available and the advance um, deposits that they paid with Bit with Bitmain to for 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 future growth, they were able to turn those into um, buying effectively new machines to replace the ones they'd handed back. And you know, um, we're looking at a miner that had less than two x a hash in December, who's operating at five point five now with literally zero debt. I think it's like one point four million of of debt on the balance sheet. Um, as at the end of as, as at the end of 2022, and um, the CEO Dan, Dan Roberts has come out on a number of presentations and and reiterated that position there. Is, you know the zero debt position. So they've got themselves into a you know they've gone through a, a challenging period, and they've come out the other side, and they'll be probably better for that going forward. And um, Bit Farms, we can see the total debt there of 21 million. Let me tell you that you know 12 12 months ago that was close to 160 million of debt. And they've done probably an amazing turnaround, um, and that's 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 helped them get into a, a far more healthy position now. They've they've managed to get over five x a hash. They're looking to grow at least to six. I think they're even um, we're putting out a, a, you know more updates to say that's going to grow higher than six as well. So they're in a position where they can probably uh, to, to to grow hash rate while the, while prices are at the are at the moment. Yeah, so the balance sheet was 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 one was one area. I looked at um, uh, I think one of the next uh, tables was the was the uh, margin table. If you look at one standout mining, here, cipher mining, um, a gross margin of seventy five percent. Now bear in mind, they didn't mine a great deal of self mining in in the last uh, quarter of twenty twenty two. It was literally a, 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 about 180 coins, I think it was in total. So we haven't got a lot of data on that, and I made sure that comment was put into the into the thing there. But I've looked at their their uh, their quarter one update, which isn't included in this, and they're, they're at a very good margin there as well. So they've obviously got a, a really good energy deal, um, as have um, Terra Wolf as well. So Terra Wolf, have, you know, they're they're quite happy to articulate what they're paying in electricity costs on each of their monthly updates. And at the April update, they're paying a, a blended uh, cost of three cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and if you compare that to say Marathon Digital, they're paying I think six and a half to seven and a half cents a kilowatt hour. So they're paying you know forty percent of Marathon. Now Marathon's figure does include the hosting fee, but you know when you're Using millions of kilowatt hours, um, that's a, that you know whoever's got the whoever's got the greatest you know the, the best price energy could end up being the winner in this game because you know it's it's you know we're only talking about so Terrawolf I think I think Terrawolf in April was spending seven and a half thousand or just under seven and a half thousand dollars per Bitcoin mined in energy costs, and Iris Energy who also have a good margin was spending over twelve on energy costs. So, you know, people say that's that's like four to five thousand per coin, and if you're mining, say, three hundred coins, that's a that's a million dollars of extra of extra cost that you're saving um, from 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 Terrell's perspective. And Iris have got good, you know, Iris have got you know a, a good margin as well on on theirs. I mean, if you look at the margin there, they're achieving forty six percent. So, this is bear in mind, this was the last the last quarter of um, of twenty twenty two, and. So I'll need to go back through and have a. We won't see Iris Energy's 
update for another three months. They only do Iris Energy and Argo because they're not US uh, list US companies. They can um, they can follow the procedure of their own companies of their own countries. So uh, Argo's U- UK listed stock, and they can they can get away with just doing a half yearly and a yearly update. And Iris Energy is the same as Australian company. Only has to produce half yearly and, and full full. So we don't get to see quarterlies from them. So when the next quarterly comes out, probably again around about September, we'll see what their six month position is. But they do put the electricity price and all their updates, so it, it, it shouldn't come as any shock when it comes through. Uh, but but the, the the rest of the rest of them, apart from you know Cipher and Iris, were all sort of like around the sort of 25 to 30 percent margins which went bear in mind the price of bitcoin that last quarter was really low so bitcoin dropped to like fifteen thousand in december and so some of these companies were still able to make a margin up at that price but take this 30 percent there with hotel you've got the issue probably the machines that they're using are probably getting older machines now compared to their peers and also the fact that they haven't got Maybe the at the moment they haven't got the the electricity prices that some of these others are paying as well. So Hut's margins, not just for that quarter, but for the, for the previous quite a few quarters, were 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 quite low in comparison to the peers. But with this with this merger, you know they, they've probably got um, they'll probably get more opportunity with the sites in the US to to get that price down and 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 to you know that. I know they're doing other things in Canada as well, looking at. At, at markets up there to see if they can improve that price up there, but they'll have the the US markets when they when they join USBTC. One thing to jump in there really quick is we get the direct cash cost per Bitcoin is interesting. And you can break it down a few different ways. You can think of it from an energy perspective and think about like what cipher mining is probably getting. Uh, I forget what Tyler told us on the podcast, but if memory serves me, it's some wind and then I think some natural gas. Uh, again, for correction, feel free to check out that podcast. is a great conversation. Some of the other ones uh, I remember off the top of my head, however, is like Bit Farms has a lot of hydro, uh, both in Quebec and other parts of Canada and then down in Paraguay. Uh, the last one I wanted to bring up, and I'm now blinking and looking at it, oh, Terra Wolf, uh, you brought up nuclear, right? And I believe they also use hydro. Looking at that, it's cool to see down like the breakdown costs uh, and sort of model out what's a cheaper model for mining Bitcoin based on the energy source. And of course, these things fluctuate. So for Argo blockchain, we saw in 2022, they were basically natural gas and they purchased this nice new fancy facility and they got it online right when natural gas spiked. And so that put them in a bad spot. These ones look a little bit more solid and stable. They uh, have a lot of renewable. The other interesting thing here is to look at the direct cash cost for Bitcoin and look at historic norms for where Bitcoin is drawing down per cycle uh, and then where it's expected to go for the next cycle. We typically see like an 80% drawdown in Bitcoin price. And this last cycle, we went down from about $69,000 to around $15,000 per coin at the bottom of the cycle. And so for the two miners that that would hurt from this page right here, of course, there's more we're not talking about, that'd be Hive and HUD8, HUD8 with about a $16,000 cost and high with about a 14.5 cost to mine a coin. Uh, the rest of them would probably be okay. Maybe Terra Wolf would be in there as well, I, I should say too. That likely won't happen again unless we see some really bad issues in the economy, but uh, it's it's just notable to point out if we do see a drawdown in Bitcoin price, you need to look at that cash cost and be below it so you can continue to fund your operations. I think I agree. Definitely regards Hut8, they, they need to look at how they can reduce their costs. And it might mean that, you know, they're going to have to look at maybe sw- swapping some of their mine, mining machines over. I think they've, they've got an older amount of assets compared to their peers at the moment. I, don't, I didn't see any massive purchases in, in recent times. You know, you look at some other miners, it's like we're getting, effectively sometimes we're getting monthly updates on the new miners coming through. And we haven't had any real big updates from Hut for a while about what's coming in. Um, so some of their machines now will be starting to, you know, maybe not perform as well as as the newer machines, um, and that might have an impact on on their on their cost as well. Um, this is this is the 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 GNA and the stock conversation we were talking about before. So if we look at uh, you know um, GNA, you know, high blockchain, ten ten percent of revenues is 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 what they're spending on GNA now. GNA is predominantly your payroll costs 
It's also uh, things like professional fees, um, could be some legal fees. And these are all sort of like those, those can cash costs. Stock compensation isn't a cash cost. It's, but it, but it is a, it is a effectively diluting the, 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 the shares of the, of the company. So, you know, when we look at cipher mining, now I, I, I wouldn't look too much at the percentages because, like we've already alluded to, that cipher mining only, only achieved about three million uh, pounds, sorry, three million dollars in, in mining revenue for the whole of 2022. And you compare that to, say, Bit Farms, um, who achieved 142 million, you know, the percentage, what they've spent on, you know, what they've what they've aligned to stock based compensation, it, you know, but it's still a high amount of stock compensation. For forty one million, you know, was a was a good percentage of the market capitalization. Uh, same with Clean Spark as well, thirty seven million of stock compensation in twenty twenty two. That it seems like you know some of these companies are rewarding their um, their senior management quite quite handsomely. And if if Clean Sparks is about you know getting to fifteen sixteen, we already we already know they're probably going to achieve that. So, you know that 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 looks like it will be provided then. And, and what happens in twenty twenty three? So we we know that the first quarter results are coming out, and that adequate look at some of these. Uh, again, for the quarter, you know five and six million stock compensation for some of these companies in the first quarter. So you could probably say some of them will be achieving over twenty million of stock compensation in twenty twenty three. On top of where the you know where they're paying themselves quite good salaries. Um, um, there was a vi- I think there was a, a YouTube video came out from Sebastian yesterday about um, CEO salaries. I had a quick quick look at that, and so he's gone through and pulled together all the uh, all the, uh, uh, the the CEOs from each of the mining companies and looked in through their filings. And the and the, and the senior management of companies they have to actually put their uh, salaries and compensation. In their updates, they they can't hide you know hide them, so they're there for public for, for the public to see. So he's put that together there. So that's, that's probably maybe worth having a look at for people who, who are interested in that. And then at the bottom there, we've got the ATM share offerings. So as I say, some of these companies have got big ATM share offerings, but we know that the likes of Clean Spa wants you know they want to get to you know 16x hash by the end of the year, and that's going to going to cost them money, not just in miners, they spent 145 million on miners, but they're also going to have to pay for infrastructure and building the additional power to support those miners. So that that um, that share offering is going to be, majority of that's going to be used up to, to get into that point. Um, but all the miners seem to have a, you know, a significant amount of, um, of, of ability to go to the market and raise more capital. Uh, Terra Wolf has said they're not going to raise capital by dilution. But I don't know how else they're going to get. They don't have any hodl, and 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 they've got 125 million debt on the balance sheet. So if they were to try and increase their size from 5.5, which is their aim at the moment, then they're going to have to use some of that that share that share offering in place there to, to sell shares to raise that capital. But um, yeah, all the miners. Are, 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 I think 2023 is the is going to be like the year of dilution again for these miners to grow. Definitely, and. Uh... Perhaps unfortunate here as a as a shareholder, but perhaps that allows these companies to grow even faster. Uh, let's go to the last chart and then close things up uh, for the day. The share price growth, you can see it here. Nice little look into the different money companies that are growing right now. Um, Cypher Mining, of course, not the new kid on the block. Like they they launched in 2021 and uh, were part of a Bit Fury group, but they have become more public recently and just hash rate going along quickly, as we mentioned. And then Iris Energy as well, sort of flipping the narrative on everyone so quickly. Uh, we're seeing some rewards there. But year to date, these miners are all up over a hundred percent. Why did turn around? Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I, you know, we 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 talked about Iris, you know, going from, you know, um, close to, you know, maybe going into chapter eleven to to actually coming out the other side and um, and and you know having zero debt and five and a half extra hash on the on, you know operational mining. Increase of two hundred thirteen percent. You know, as I said said earlier, that that gets into a market cap of about two hundred thirty million. You know, they've got the of those miners listed there, they've got the lowest market cap by by a considerable amount. So if you compare, say, Wolf to Iris, Wolf have got a lower hash rate with one hundred twenty five million in debt on the balance sheet, but they've got a market cap of fifty percent higher than Iris Energy. So, um, I, you know, the, the markets, I don't know. How they how they're doing this, but it's I don't really think they've got a full understanding. 
Yeah, I mean, there there is something about mining stocks being very similar to tokens on the Ethereum network, where there's not always a good fundamental understanding of things, uh, since it's a derivative of Bitcoin in a sense. Okay, let's go to the rankings for this piece. Uh, and a great part about this was that we were able to come up with some rankings based on like the different metrics, and we didn't go through them all over the last few minutes. We went through some of the more important ones. Tell me about the rankings and how you came to this uh, conclusion. Again, this is not financial advice. This is more for like content purposes. But it is like a, a healthy understanding of what the market looks like for these mid-tier miners. Yeah, I mean, you know, I looked at a number, like I said, a number of metrics there and tried to get, you know, one or two metrics that for each of the areas. So from liquidity, you know, current rate, current ratio on the Bitcoin hodl was was two good two good metrics to use. Margin, obviously, for profitability, um, you know, debt, debt to equity ratio, solvency, um, and just you know went, went through like that. But the weighting was quite important, and, and, I, and I applied a higher weighting to profitability and solvency than I did twenty four hours. And the reason I did that is because you know we saw in we saw in twenty twenty two the difficulty miners had in in maintaining the solvency and producing profits when when the Bitcoin price drops. So I, I gave an extra, you know, five uh, percent weighting to that, and then for some of the other, for the, for some of the you know, like the hash rate growth, I applied a five percent weighting and stop performance of five percent weighting, which I felt was, you know, it's important, but maybe not as important as profitability and liquidity. I rated those higher. Now, you know, people can disagree. With that's fine. Just say just for same purposes, but you apply the same method to each of the miners, and um, you can see quite clearly. That the, the the one standout miner iris just seems to be fairly good in every metric. It does come out um, strongest in debt to equity, and that that's because it's got rid of all its debt, so it's got zero debt. So for that metric, it, it, you know, at the moment it is the top miner, and, and we'll probably when we get there next quarterly update, or sorry, the half year that they, we'll we'll see that um, showing that in that position there. And they also scored high when you look at the actual value. Of the company and how much hash rate they've got for actual value. So you divide the hash rate into actual value to give you a basically a, a sort of like a cost per per exa hash, and and they were the cheapest considerably um, in that in that sort of metric there. So when we looked at giving them all a, you know a score for each one, um, and bear in mind it was out of a hundred uh, the total score. So if you scored a hundred, you got maximum in every, in every metric. Um, Iris Energy came top, and it came top quite significantly. I mean, it was you know seventy six percent out of a hundred is 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 a, is a is a good is a good score. And we look at you know, interesting enough, Bit Farms and Clean Spot were, were came in joint second. Now, I think if you go to like four or five decimal places, I think Bit Farms may have may have picked Clean Spot, but for for the, for the I put them both as second because to be honest with you, there's nothing to separate them. I mean, when you look at when you, when you go to two decimal places. And they're still the same amount. I give them both the um, ranking of two. Um, followed by Hood Tate. Now, Hood Tate, we've highlighted their production issues, but the strength that Hood Tate have got is they've got a fantastic hodl. They've got great balance sheet strength. So, they, you know, if you were saying of these miners here, if the Bitcoin price, say, dropped considerably from where we are now, who's still going to make it? You know, Hut Eight have probably got enough runway to make it longer than most of the miners in that in that list. They've been quite cautious. They've not gone out and and built massive sites and and purchased loads and loads of miners. They've done things in a more gradual way. So they've added some other businesses. They've added the computing, um, high high level computing service that they've got there, or high performance computing. Sorry, um, and that brings them in. You know, about you know twenty percent of their revenues. Um, so they've got some, you know, some good revenues coming in from non-Bitcoin mining, which is helpful in the time when Bitcoin price drops. So they scored really well on the first few metrics, but then when it gets down to mine performance, and when it gets down to stock performance, because mine performance and stock performance probably is a bit of a correlation there, and then hash rate growth, they're not scoring as well as as those. Hive again, I think in, in a very similar position to to uh, Hutte. Quite strong on the balance sheet um, and the ratios, but their growth has, has sort of not been as as, as high as, as some of the others. So, um, but if you look at take away Iris Energy, you've got sort of five miners that are very very close, and slight changes in any of those metrics could have changed that the running order. I think you'd have to change it considerably 
for Terra Wolf and Iris Energy to finish anywhere other than first and seven. Terra Wolf, they've become really, really popular as a miner. They've got a lot of, there's a lot on social media, there's a lot of interest in Terra Wolf. I've seen that. You know, I, I only have one concern. It's just it's just the debt, mate. The 125 million of debt that needs to be paid. And I know their, their finance director is doing everything in 2023 to get a significant chunk of that um, paid paid back so that so it puts them in a good position coming up to the halving. You know, he's very, very well thought of in the industry. He's a, he's got a great resume as a as a finance as a as a finance director. So, you know, um they've got the right person in, in the job there to do that. Um, so if they can get, you know, the hash rates growing now, get the Bitcoin production and be able to get that debt reduced, I can see good things for those. But there was no way with their balance sheet at the moment that they could really compete with the other miners. Most of the miners didn't have really that much of these, didn't have that much debt. If Argo blockchain was on this group, I think Argo probably would have been in a sort of position to tear all. Um, but as I say, it's a snapshot in time. Um, you know, we could look at this in three months' time, and we might see a different a different ranking of there. I mean, you know, Clean, clean Spark really probably with their runway over the next six months, growing their hash rates where it's going to be, and the fact they've got you know um, tapped into good energy sources at good prices, they they could really challenge the Mara riots coming coming up to the end of this year. But as I say, it, it was just something I did rather than just doing sort of like. The uh, mine performance by exactual utilization, looking at a lot more metrics together, looking at equitable value rather than market cap, because equitable value takes into consideration the debt on the balance sheet, also takes into consideration the cash. And so it's a better metric to use um, in terms of uh, valuations when, you com- when you're comparing like companies. Equitable value is probably the best metric to use for that. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely the, the debt we've seen in the past has been a hamstring for some miners or some are able to get past it, some are not. Uh, so it's definitely uh, something to watch on the terrible front. But uh, there are sort of newer minor in terms of people paying attention to them and seem to be having some astronomical growth in terms of hash rate coming online. So it's definitely something to watch. Uh, Anthony, thank you so much for putting this power ranking together. Again, you can find it on his Twitter account or go to the Compass Mining website and you can find it. Definitely give it a read. It's well thought out. Uh, over 2,000 words speaking about like the different ways to value these mid- Uh, tier miners again just for content purposes but from us at the mining pod thank you for watching and thank you for joining us today anthony thanks will thanks very much